want to welcome each and every one of you all here to Laura Heights Seventh Day Adventist Church. To the family, Laura Heights extends its condolences. And we trust and pray that this will be a service that will celebrate the life of Floyd. And we look forward to one day when Christ comes back through the clouds of glory. Amen. As Floyd came to learn that he would be part of that first resurrection. But until then, he sleeps. He sleeps in the precious arms of his Savior who he has learned to trust. And more than trust, he learned to obey. So we just want to welcome each and every one of you all and hope that you receive a blessing from the celebration of Floyd's life. Please bow your heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we humbly ask you to come into this house and be with us today as we give honor and glory to your name and fondly remember your son, my dear brother, Floyd Frederick Gunther. May our hearts be right with you as we come now and ask you to forgive our sins, to make us new in your son, Jesus, Amen. and let us rejoice in our salvation. Yes. We ask for you, Father, to comfort all who are hurting yes. during this temporary separation from Floyd Frederick and give us your supernatural peace in this day and the days ahead. May we, may we remember the goodness and the joy of the Lord and stand on his promises today as we celebrate Floyd's life in your son, Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Father, for loving us. We thank you for this wonderful church family of Laurel Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we ask you to anoint the pastor as he brings forth your word. We ask all these things in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 20, the armor of God. This was one of my brother Floyd's, Fred, favorite um, word in the Bible, and he often shared that with his family. So I'd like to share it with each of you today. The armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Hello. Uh, at this time, what we like to do is uh, gather some of the men that uh, Floyd knew. And uh, as you guys know which ones, I invited a few, but we will welcome anybody that wants to come up and sing uh, 
uh, Floyd's favorite song. And um, while you guys are doing that, we're going to set up. We had a, uh, we've had a very active men's ministry here at the Laurel Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, Patrick, who just uh, shared, has been our leader. And Timothy, for a while, was also our leader. And one of the things that we often and frequently do, and you that were with us at the anointing, we sang a hymn that we frequently sing. And I think there may be another man or two. Come and join us. We've got the words here. Uh, but this is a song that we frequently sang together, a cappello. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to, the men are going to sing the first stanza, a cappello. Does someone know what a cappello means? <laughs> Without the piano or instrumentation, right? And then afterwards, we're going to ask you to join and possibly the piano will start in at that time. But we're going to get the key going and then we will, guys, there's several microphones so we can pick up because this does go worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. to join. Let's sing the first stanza again, okay? What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leading on the everlasting arms. I'm leading, I'm leading, safe and secure from If you guys don't have anything to do on Tuesday nights, now wait a minute. No. We, all have, we all have something to do on Tuesday nights, you know. But I want to invite you, if you, I know you love Floyd, if you want to honor him, we invite you. Patrick? Tuesdays Here. at 7 o'clock, every two, well, this Tuesday anyway, we're meeting. And then this uh, Sunday, we're going to have man's breakfast. Not this Sunday, following Sunday. Tell every, about breakfast. We're, well, with breakfast is great. We have uh, we we got we got food for the soul and and prayers uh, and fellowship, and we just kind of build a bridge together and we talk as men. It's a wonderful thing. And you ladies, invite the men to come. And they say, come on, you're going to breakfast or whatever. We have a good time. We sing the song. We have a very good time together, and we talk about issues and things uh, for men. And uh, guys, we don't want to talk about it, but we do. Okay. And the reason why we're talking a lot about the men's ministry is Floyd was really involved. Amen. Yes. 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 He yes. took it. He, he really took it to heart. That's right. He That's cooked. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he could. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being, can y'all hear me? Nope. Hello? <laughs> okay. Go this way. Um, I'm Carol, one of Fred's sisters, and this is another uh, verse or verse or uh, words from the Bible that were very important to my brother. It's the parable of the lost son, Luke 11 through 32. Then he said, a man had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. 
When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend to the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than, enough food, more than enough food to eat, but here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still off, Still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered slaughter the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast with my friends. But when your son returns, oh, but when your son returns who swallowed up your property with harlots, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Amen. Floyd, my friend, I feel that uh, I am not performing. I am playing from my heart in memory of Floyd. He was my good friend, my neighbor, and I'm glad, very glad I got to know him. Uh, and he was in peace. And we had a few talks here and there, and uh, he visited me around the corner. We were neighbors. And... Uh, I played a couple of things, and he really enjoyed it, and I could see it in his eyes and his heart. So, like I say, I'm just playing in the memory of our brother, our friend, uh, Floyd.
Um, Pastor, that was my brother. You guys, we got some Garzas here, so I guess we're part of the clan. Um, and Pastor, right back there, 47 years ago this April, Ephraim and I dirtied that baptistry there. And a few years ago, Floyd did too. And we're a family at our church here. And you saw that in Floyd. And I have to, I have to say something special today because today is our dad's birthday. He would have been uh, 94 today. And uh, what a blessing that we can celebrate a close friend and my brother and I are here to minister where four years ago we had the service for my dad here. So I'm glad that I can share this with you guys today. Today, today we celebrate the life and memory of our dear loved one, our family, our son, our brother, our uncle, our dad, our dear friend, Floyd Frederick Ginther. And I got confused a little bit here because he always told me it was Ginther, then the sister said Gunther, so now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, no, it's Ginther, so I'm going to have to find out with you sisters exactly what, we, but I know Floyd liked Ginther. So during the, the, the last 12 months, Floyd was on a personal journey of recuperation and regaining his strength from a heart attack. And you could see him growing each week, each month. He was growing and growing in strength. Yet after reaching a fair level of recovery, his body and his heart and his kidney, they just... Uh, couldn't keep up with his strong will. And the body said, Floyd, <laughs> we want to slow down. And Floyd said, no. But finally, his body succumbed. And with a year of good expectations, Floyd's passing has been filled with much sorrow and pain. Yet his legacy, which we celebrate today, is full of joy, full of faith, full of hope, and full of love. Amen. To us at Laurel Heights, our dear brother is Floyd. But to his family, he's mostly known and best known as, say it, Fred. Fred. <laughs> so we're going to call him both names and you'll exactly know who we're talking about. His family says he was a mere 67 years old. As we get a little older, that is mere, you know. <laughs> when you're 15, oh boy, that's an old guy, you know. But uh, we realize that we did not have enough time to spend with our dear loved one, family member, and church family member, Floyd. We were blessed to be near him. Fred was first at the Met Metropolitan Methodist Hospital and then taken to the Kindred Hospital section of the Downtown Baptist Memorial Hospital. For about six weeks, Fred fought a vigilant fight. He exhibited a strength that only our Heavenly Father could provide. And I know it's not sharing time, but it's my time to talk about Floyd right now here. So when I told the sisters, I said, Floyd was a real trooper. And just in half a fraction of a second, just like mom. <laughs> And uh, we went to visit mom when she was sick. And Floyd was always telling us about his visits with mom. You could see the gleam in his eye, mom, as he went to visit with you. Floyd Frederick Ginther passed away, wow, on Christmas Day in the evening. All day, Floyd was surrounded by his dear family and his close church friends brothers and sisters. We give thanks to our gracious God who lovingly enabled us to be near him and by his side. Fred was a mere two months shy of being 68. 
He was born on February 25th in 1951, right here in San Antonio, not far from here. To the then 17-year-old Celia Marmolejo Guerra Ginther, and to her late husband, 26-year-old Floyd Mac Ginther. Can you imagine mom, 17 years old, holding that little baby? What a blessing that she had as she held her little Fred, her little Floyd. You can still remember it as if it was yesterday. And here, 68 years later, we're saying goodbye. Fred spent most of his life right here in San Antonio and Austin. But he blessed our country by serving our country in the US Marines in California. Fred was close to his family and very caring to them. He grew up with two younger brothers, Tony Aguilar and Eddie Herrera. He is preceded in death by these two wonderful brothers of his. Fred's responsibility grew, mom, as he helped that you had three other girls right here. And if Fred was right there helping and assisting and uh, helping in any way that he could, nonstop helping Fred. <laughs> Sandy, raise your hand. Carol and Laura, beautiful sisters. As the oldest and firstborn son, felt, Fred felt the responsibility and took care of uh, took a lot of care of his younger siblings. As any good son, Mom, he enjoyed anything that you made, especially your awesome homemade tortillas, your rich enchiladas, your savory tamales. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting hungry here, huh? And especially, you ready for this? That mouth-watering menudo. And for you gringos here that don't know what menudo is, <laughs> <clears throat> and, and you vegetarians, I make a pretty wicked vegetarian menudo, but I don't make it too often. But uh, his sweet mother, Celia, now 85. Yes, God bless you. Let's all say that. God bless you, Celia. Let's all say that. God bless you, Celia. Uh, I need to ask a, a question right here. I had to con consult here with the family, make sure. Uh, but dear Celia, 85, she has buried, and this isn't fair, three sons. And I know one husband. That's not fair. Life is not fair. Celia, Fred was most like you strong and loving and caring. Fred was a history buff, and he loved the old classic rock and roll music. He had a keen interest and a love for the Harley David motorcycles. You guys uh, understand that one, right? And he really enjoyed sci-fi movies like Star Wars. And he liked some of the TV programs like X-Files. Oh, we couldn't watch enough of that one sometimes. And being from Texas, he was a good fan of the Dallas Cowboys. And being from San Antonio, he was a very enthusiastic of Spurs. San Antonio Spurs. And Fred, you may not have known this, Pastor, he was a pretty good poker player to boot. I don't think he practiced that here at church. Fred was a hard worker. And uh, the pictures can keep going if you want. Uh, loop them up again. You can loop those pictures back. 
and gainfully employed in various professions such as auto repair sales. Man, those are good people. When you don't know exactly what you need, I've got, yeah, this is what you need, right? That's a perfect guy. Warehousing, music management, Ephraim, and plumbing. Boy, haven't you all need a plumber sometimes? Boy, that's, that's something we really need. And he gratefully volunteered at a wonderful place, the Salvation Army. Fred was blessed with two sons and two grandsons. And oh, how we loved them. And when I read your name, raise your hand so others here that don't know you. Fred Jason Ginther Jr. Where is he? Huh? Didn't show. Okay. With, okay. And Floyd's, I'm sorry, Frederick Floyd Stefan Ginther. There he is. And two grandkids, Jeremiah Andrew Ginther. There. What's that? Grandmother. Grandmother? Okay. With, and Connor Josiah Ginther. See here? All right. And oh my, they were indeed his pride and joy, weren't they? At some periods of, uh, after some periods of personal struggle in his life, Fred found God. God was always there. But Fred finally found him. Fred accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. This and his study of the Word of God changed his life, and he became a very well-versed Bible guy. He could tell you, you'd say something, he'd quote you a Bible verse. He was always talking about the Bible and what he was reading, the book that he was reading. And um, he depended upon and found prayer to be the strength of his life. About... I think five years ago, Floyd uh, was baptized right here in these waters, like some of us, a number of us here. And he served Christ in the church, in this church, everywhere that he was able to, and he helped as a local deacon. Floyd found strength in St. Paul's admonition of being fully clothed in the armor of God that was read just a while ago. And he related personally to Christ's parable of the prodigal son. And John 3.16, which you see on the, uh, on the bulletin in the front, was one of his favorite scriptures. And uh, this song became one of his favorite songs that we'll be playing here just shortly. The old man is dead. We'll be sharing that in just a bit. And if you've not heard this, better have some tissues to have available because this is a powerful rendition of this. Fred was a good son, he was a good brother, and he was a good friend. He loved God fully, and he loved his family dearly. He was very protective of both of them, his family and, and, and God and his religion. Fred had a quick wit about him, and he always had a great story to tell. Uh, an obvious priority was spending time with his family. He made every effort to always attend family celebrations and all the get-togethers. He always made sure to ask everyone, how are you doing? How are you doing? How have you been? Because that was important to him. Fred, Floyd, Floyd, Fred made our lives richer and fuller, and we are blessed to have known him. The pain of death is great. But the memories of his life bring us comfort and peace. We know Fred had a, the full assurance of salvation. And he joins the millions who have passed before him with a full expectation of, a, of the soon resurrection of life. You may honor your loved one, Fred Floyd, and join him in giving your life to Jesus Christ if you've never done so. You may thus have the assurance of seeing your loved one again. And I know if Fred were here, he would tell me, tell me to tell you this. Friend, give your life to Jesus Christ. If you'll switch from the picture videos to the uh, oh, no, we have a special music.
Behold the star. Behold the star, wondrous bright, shining down upon this night. Listen to its distant song. We're going to do a, a joined thing here. Uh, Frederick Jr. is going to come up and share some memories, and then the sisters, and then we're going to open it up, open the mic up to anyone who would like to share loved memories of, of Floyd Fred. And uh, it can be somber, or it can be happy. It can be something funny. So it's okay if we laugh here because we're celebrating someone that laughed. So come and share. Uh, Fred Jr., come on up here. You're the one that starts, and then the sisters will be next in order. And then we'll have a microphone available here. Uh, David, are you going to have the mic? Okay. good at things like this, but um, my dad raised me well. He gave me a lot of learnings, taught me everything that I know. He gave me what I needed to survive in life. And he always told me to study and show thyself approved. Yes, he He's made his way into the graces of heaven, and I know it. And I thank y'all for all coming today being here to support him. He was a good man. He lived a great life. He uh, did many things. <laughs> Me and my dad have great memories. Racing, cruising, going down places, just hanging out, doing things that you know kids do with their sons. I mean, fathers do with their sons. Taking the go-kart out, going out, doing some donuts. <laughs> he loved driving, and he taught me how to drive. He changed his life around. He started out not so on the path of God, but on his own path to find out where he wanted to go in life. He made some choices in life and led him to where he wanted to go. And he was happy at the end. He had a great church family that supported him. He made it back home to San Antonio with his family that supported him. When, you know, we couldn't, I couldn't. You know. Even in death, he's still helping me out. bringing me through all of this. And, you know, I miss him a lot. And I wish he could be here today. <laughs> but I know he's in a better place. And I know he's looking down on us and wanting us to be better. You know, wanting us to do better, wanting us to live a better life. It's one thing my dad showed me. He changed his life. It's possible for a man to change. And he turned his life around. Yeah. 
he found God. And he led me straight to him. With all of this, he not only saved his own soul, but he saved many others. God bless my father. Amen. <laughs> May he be with y'all too, yeah. as he is with me. I love y'all very much. And thank y'all. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. We greatly appreciate y'all being with us today to share this special memories of our brother, Fred. Um, I have so many memories of my brother. Um, he was a family man. He, he, has, he had started his life in a certain path that I guess a lot of us start. We go exploring the world, trying to find out what's best for us, and we explore and we get into trouble and things like that. But over time, my brother, you could see he was a family man. He wanted to raise his son and be an example, although he still had some many issues where he, he failed and he'd come back out of it. But all along, he always had a love for family, and he always chose to um, put his family first. Um, of course, over time, he grew to have a relationship with God. And in the last five or more years, you could see that relationship just grow. I mean, it was outstanding because for me it helped me too I had grown closer with the Lord over the years and so I was able to talk to him and share Bible verses and just have that closeness not only of God but also of our relationship with God and then he would also share his his things that he might be having issues with and he was always open to listening having that opening that open ear um, and he would still guide me no matter how much he failed in his life or things that went wrong, I still looked up to my brother because he was my brother. And um, I just told him, you know, we all fail. We've all made our mistakes. But brother, you know, you've come a long way. And um, I appreciate all that you've done in your relationship with God. And, you know, we had, he goes, I want this for you, Sandra. I want you to do this in your life. And we, we shared a lot. Um, and it's, it's really hard to see that he left us so soon because I truly felt like he had more years. But God called him and I had to accept that. My family, all we all accepted it. Difficult as it, as it is, I know he's with us. So, and I know that we'll all be together one day. So that gives me comfort in my heart. But just to go back a few years, over the years back when he was younger, he, cause he was our older sibling, he wanted to provide for us because our dads maybe were out of the picture or they weren't around. He would take us out to go buy shoes. Um, he was a manager in Ingram Park Mall at a store shoe, at a shoe store. And uh, he took us and he goes, I'm gonna take all y'all girls and go buy you shoes. And I just remember that's one of my memories out there. Uh, later on, he was a manager at Sound Warehouse and he brought us all to love music, rock and roll, all kinds of different music, um, disco and what have you. But um, he would, uh, have us go to the sound warehouse and pick out whatever we wanted. It could be albums, uh, eight tracks, uh, cassettes. Yes. <laughs> yes, eight tracks. Uh, I've heard of those. Yes. <laughs> right. yes. Awesome. And um, I vividly remember him, us buying, um, him buying us Donna summer t-shirts that said bad girls on the back. And I remember wearing that light blue, baby blue t-shirt to Mark Twain uh, Junior High. And um, it said bad girls, and I thought I was bad because I was, <laughs> had the bad girls back here. Uh, but um, <coughs> that stuck with me. That, that really stuck with me because those were some of the, the best times now looking back of my life with him. And I'll never forget those small things, but yet I know that he loved us. <coughs> Not only as an older brother, but as kind of like a father in a way because we, our father was gone and out of the picture. So we looked up to our brothers as that father image too. Um, and in 1994, I took a job uh, with a Southwestern Bell Telephone, and I was in Austin, Texas, and I didn't have uh, the means to go find a place right away, and he goes, sister, why don't you come down to, um, to Austin and stay with our family, which was Donna and uh, my, my nephew, Frederick, and I was so humbly thankful that he allowed me to do that, because it, one, it saved me money, two, I was able to go over there, and then 
uh, spend time with him and grow our relationship. And um, we got to cook meals together, share stories, have fun. Um, for that year that I was in Austin, and then I would drive back on the weekend to San Antonio to be with my son, where my mom was taking care of my son here. But I had that challenge of taking that job. So those were good, great memories, and I'll never, I'll never forget those times. Um, and he helped me move numerous times, numerous times from apartment to apartment. Brother, I need your help. Can you come help me? I need, I need somebody to help me with this move. I have furniture. And he's like, no problem. He showed up. He was always there. Um, and then just like in the last five years, he came back to San Antonio. Um, his family split, and he came back. And I said, you know, brother, um, you can come stay with me for a couple of months and get on your feet. He was going through difficult times. And I said, you know, we're here for you. The family's here for you. I'll do whatever I can. Um, he had some time that he stayed with us and got on his feet and then got back out on his own. And um, those were nice times because I felt like, you know, what he's done so much for me on my life, and I'm giving him a little bit back in return. And um, it just, and I didn't, helped him with whatever he needed because at the time his health was getting a little bit, um, he was having some issues with his health. Helped him with his social security disability and to help him get on to that. And he was able to then live and take care of himself with that. Um, and then whenever I was ready to make a meal around the house, I said, brother, come on over and eat. And he was ready to come on over and eat. You know, he goes, sis, this is good. And I said, whatever you want, you know. And um, I was always there to help him cook, uh, just to share ideas with him. And he knew how to cook. Believe me, my brother knew how to cook. But he was not really wanting to do it anymore. So <laughs> I said, come on over here, and you'll have some, some food. And um, I just will cherish everything about my brother. It's, it is hard to lose someone. I've lost this is my third brother, but <clears throat> I just know he's with us, and I feel that comfort. And um, although he's not here physically, I know he's with us spiritually, and um, you know, I know that we'll all be there one day together. So Amen. thank you all for being thank here today. You. I don't have a speech prepared. <laughs> um, I'm Carol, one of Fred's sisters, and I'm going to echo the set set sentiment that my sister talked about in terms of rock and roll music. So um, to this day, my daughters probably know this too, but I love all types of music, um, as many of us do, but my brother Fred was really the great impression upon us. And I have vivid memories of him and Tony um, and Eddie. Those are my fondest memories because, you know, there's a big age difference with us. So um, holidays, you know, even though they weren't together and maybe didn't see each other that often, once you just put the three of them in the room and a little, you know, Coke and Jack or, you know, whatever, Jack Daniels or whatever <laughs> on Christmas, they'd make a little drink and, and Seagram 7, I remember that, and then Mama's Tamales. Um, or Mexican food, and then we they talk for hours, and we find out, you know, we grew up not too far away from here, and um, we learned all the things they did when they were young boys, and we're like, what? You did what? You got away with what? You know, over here at San Pedro Park and the swimming pool, and they would take the bikes out when my mom was at work, and they wouldn't even my mom wouldn't know, and they'd be three, you know, get you know get injured, and then she'd say like, why is the bed broken, and you know, and then. Why, why is the window broken and all these things we were, you know, we would, we would laugh and laugh and laugh and they would just keep us laughing all night long and it would be hours and hours and hours of conversation and good times and so much fun to hear. And um, uh, also uh, the Commodores, because we went to the Commodores concert, I don't know if you remember that. So it was like a big deal because we were younger, but we felt like we were much older because we had our older brothers kind of looking out for us and, and taking us places that maybe a typical younger sibling wouldn't go, but, you know, a very fierce protector, um, all of our brothers. Um, so uh, those are the, the fondest memories. And, and one of the things I really appreciate about him is his relationship with the Lord. And that was very apparent. Um, I, I can't begin to tell you in the six weeks that he was in the hospital in this past year for my brother, you know, and I know that strength comes from our mom. Um, and I think we've been blessed with a little bit of that sprinkled in, in all our family. Uh, but one of the strongest people that I know, aside from my mom, um, you know, fierce and always in a good mood. That's uh, that's another thing I remember about Fred. Um, kind of always had like a smile on his face, and um, you know, just was a good disposition all the time. You know, just and, and I think that's because he was at peace with the Lord. And um, 
And in his final moments, we were blessed to be there with him. And he knew we were there, and we knew he was saved. And um, that comforts me and our family. And um, I'm going to miss him dearly, but I, I want you to celebrate him, too, because he was a great person and a, a good son and a, a wonderful brother. Um, you know, we, I miss all my brothers. Um, they uh, really had an impact mm. on my life. Yeah. I'm not as good as my sisters. I have to write it down or I'll just lose it all. Um, I knew my big brother simply as Fred growing up. And there were 19 years between the two of us. So he was gone and out of the house and in California by the time I came along. But like my other brothers, Tony and Eddie, who have all now passed and gone to be with Jesus, I grew closer to each of them in the years that they encountered their health challenges. Although I'm the baby of the family, I'm also a registered nurse for 22 years now, so that's what is normal for me. Um, I would often help my brothers and my family understand the complex medical issues that were being encountered. And it was the same for Fred, but one of my most favorite memories of Fred came on one of my daily visits to the hospital. One day, after an incredibly difficult string of days, that left us all wondering whether Fred would ever wake up again <laughs> or be his old self. Um, I found myself very discouraged. I would normally pray on my walk up to the hospital. And this was one day when I was especially downcast and really struggling. And my prayer was just kind of talking to God and really crying and just saying, I don't, I don't understand. And God knew I was weak and what I needed, and as I walked into my brother's room, I was greeted by the most beautiful smile that I'd ever seen on his face. And I'm just having trouble seeing right now. Um, it was a wonderful, beautiful smile, and I knew instantly, I knew instantly that Jesus had answered our prayers for that day, and I was flooded with comfort, and I d deeply felt <laughs> God's love. I, love you, baby. I hurried to take the picture. I got my camera out. I wanted to share that beautiful smile, so I got my phone out and fumbled to take it. I wanted to share it with my family and dear prayer warrior friends that were praying. I wanted them to see that moment. Um, this picture is in the slideshow. It's a little fuzzy, and it will remain my favorite memory uh, of my brother. Because um, that picture in the slideshow showed that no matter what the circumstance looked like from the outside, no matter the health crisis that he faced day to day, Fred knew the love, the hope, the peace, and the joy of the Lord. Yes, and that leads me to share, as, as everyone has shared so far, how our brother Fred had grown in his relationship with Jesus these last four to five years of his life. He was truly a blessed son of the Father and loved learning God's word and serving others through his church. That church was here at Laurel Heights Seventh-day Adventist. Fred truly found his home here at Laurel Heights. He was a changed man and he became a spiritual anchor for his sons and for our family. Yes. Laurel Heights impacted my brother so profoundly, and the relationships were truly reflective of how God intended the church to be. Our family was forever blessed by Laurel Heights uh, church members throughout his health woes and long hospital stays, and we saw the depths of this church family's love and concern for our brother. <coughs> Manuel, uh, Manny Hernandez and many other elders, pastor, church members would regularly visit and stay with my brother daily for hours, hours. Frankly, I was overwhelmed to see that hospital visitation is still alive, that ministry is still alive and well at Laurel Heights, as it has fallen away in many other churches across our city and our country. But Manny would often say, where is Manny? <laughs> 
Manny would often say that he did not want Fred to be alone and that Fred did better when people were with him and watching and praying by his side. How simple. Yes, how true, Manny. You were so right. He always did better. And the comfort and the peace that came from the presence of those regular visits by church members was such a blessing and a gift to our family. I want Pastor Bill and all the church congregation to know that this hospital visitation ministry will never be forgotten and it will be shared to the glory of the Lord every chance I can speak it. A sincere heartfelt thanks to all the prayer warriors who took time away from doing other things to regularly pray for Fred. It meant the world to us and to him. Fred would want everyone to know how important Jesus was in his life. And he would encourage everyone here to just draw nearer to God. No matter what you're going through, Jesus is available to all of us. Please do not go through this life without Jesus being your true strength, your true hope and foundation. Fred showed us how to love Jesus and love others. And that's all that really matters. Um, so we would like to thank you again for loving Fred and sharing this special time as we celebrate this mighty man of God. And I want to thank my mother for being so strong um, and for Frederick, for Frederick to be so strong um, during those final moments. He needed his son to be there. And I don't know if you all knew this, but Fred actually died earlier that morning at 6, 6 a.m. His heart stopped for four minutes. But God was so gracious to us that he allowed him to come back from that death. And it was for Frederick to come and for all of the family that could be there, for us to be able to get there and to be with him as he, he went to Jesus. And so we, we, we take that. We, we thank you all. We know how hard it is, but we want you to know that God still does healing miracles. Amen. And Fred is truly healed in Christ, and he suffers no more. And, and we were so blessed. We were so blessed by that whole, um, that whole uh, uh, miracle that God did on Christmas morning for our family. So we thank you all for coming again and for being such a blessing in our lives. Thank you. We have some other family that you're welcome to either come up here or we have a roving mic. You're welcome to come up, some of the family that wants to share. Either way, here we come. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Debbie Leal Herrera, and I am the sister, the proud sister, of uh, Melinda Genther. And we were told it was Genther. <laughs> um, my sister was uh, Fred's first wife. She was the beginning, if you will, of uh, kind of the, we met Fred when he was in his mid-20s. They married uh, in 80 and had a beautiful son, uh, Frederick Jason Gunther Jr. And um, the beauty of, of love is what uh, I remember. Uh, young love, I just, and the girls, the sisters, are, they were, I got to, we were the little sisses of these two. <laughs> um, but we had the joy of attending their wedding at a very quaint we uh, wedding in 1980. But that, that's what I remember when we talk about the food. Our family grew up about five, six blocks away from, from um, Fred's, Frederick's, Fred's mom and the girls. They lived on Agonier, we lived on Cincinnati. And um, you know, everybody can kind of relate to when you're young and in love and the first time that um, you bring your new boyfriend and your new girlfriend to mom and dad, you know, what's that like? It's kind of nervous. And so I remember I was about 13 or 12. And my mom was doing an extra bit to get the house ready. It was always clean and everything. I said, what's going on with you, mom? And she says, Melinda's bringing her boyfriend. <laughs> you know, Melinda had moved out. Melinda's bringing her boyfriend. I want everything just right. And so we're, we're cooking today and the boys are coming and we're going to meet her boyfriend, which was Fred. And so when he came and she announced him and showed him and you know welcomed into the family, they were dating and this and that, but you could see that young love. That's what I remember. You could see that in Fred and you could see that in my sister. And for the first time, 
I saw my sister different, that she wow. had met someone. And, and so when they left and everybody left and we were cleaning and all, um, my, uh, my dad asked, my, no, my mom asked my dad, so, you know, because he was a father. And she said, what, what did you think of him? What did you think of Melinda's new boyfriend? And my dad was like, will he ever stop eating? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so when they talked, but then though they went, I remember that. And so, but that's the beauty and that's the memory that I share as I stand before you today that, you know, he did have such a beginning. He had such a wonderful love and she had such a lo wonderful love for, uh, for him, for her husband, for their son that they had together. And even over the years, um, last year, uh, for their grandson Jeremiah's birthday, um, I was able, Melinda had us over, and I was able to see Fred. I hadn't seen him in, God, probably 15, 20 years maybe. And, um, and just kind of sharing with him and seeing him, you know, it was very different seeing what y'all talked about, that he had accepted Christ as his Lord, and he had been saved. He was a very different man to me. But my greatest memory, too, is his car. He had a white Ford Galaxy. It was like, uh, that was his pride. And um, he loved that car. And every time he'd drive up to the house, it would go, room, room, room. <laughs> and then he'd shut it off. And so he just had a lot of youthfulness in him, but a lot of responsibility. And so what a great, what a great um, deal it is to see. But once again, I acknowledge you, my sister, and I thank you so much for loving this man. You know, he loved you, and, and you were his love. So eternal rest grant unto him and perpetual light shine upon him. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Anyone else? If you want a mic or you can come up here. We have a roving mic, uh, go ahead and stand up. Anybody want to say something on the microphone? Anybody else? Come on, Timothy. Come on, right up. And there's somebody back. Well, you come on up, Tony. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of us men as part of the men's ministry that can come and share just a tidbit with the family about your memories with Floyd. I would just want to say that the main thing that I want to share the memory with the family is that Floyd was a true man of God. Yes. You know, there's a principle that Jesus talked about as he walked and talked with his disciples. And he shared, them a, shared with them a principle. He said, out of the abundance of the heart doth man speak. And what Jesus was talking about, he says, the things that dominate one's mind comes out because it's in their heart. They share it. And guess what? He shared all the time as I got to know him. He could talk day and night about one person, yeah. and that was his Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you know a person is saved. That's how you know that someone has been touched by the Savior, and the Savior has changed their life because that person becomes the passion of their life and that's who he talked about constantly about the word of God and about Jesus Christ who changed his life. You know, whatever Floyd's starting point was really doesn't matter. It's how he landed. Yeah. It was his final destination. And at some point in Floyd's life, Floyd made an intelligent decision. He came to realize that I have a choice to be born once and die twice, or to be born twice to die once. Mm. Now, now you all probably I wonder where, where is he going with that? You see, when you're born in the flesh and you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're born to die twice. But when you decide to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're born twice, once in the flesh, but you're born again of the Spirit, you're guaranteed to die one death. So 
if Floyd had a message for you all, it would be this. Choose to be born twice, to die once. Because this is a celebration of Floyd's life. And you know, as much as death is an enemy to all of us, and we don't enjoy it, uh, we can look forward to one day that we will see Floyd. And he died in the hope of the resurrection. Yes. I just want to share this one last thing. Um, Floyd was truly uh, a man who really thought about his family, loved his family, prayed for his son. Many times we were gathered together in prayer for his son. And he introduced me to his sister. Come to find out we worked at USA together. And he kept pressing me. He, he knew there was a lot of stuff going. He said, Tim, my sister needs to talk with you. And uh, so we, we, uh, we uh, scheduled a, a, a time at USA to got together, and I got a chance to, to meet you. We got a chance to talk about careers and things. So it's been a blessing to get to know you, Sandra, and the, and the rest of the sisters. And I just want to say uh, one thing. When I look at Floyd, I look at his good looks. I see where he got yeah, it from yeah, yeah, I see yeah. where all the families yeah. got the son too, yeah. the whole family. Um, it's a blessing to have got to know Floyd and um, I'm just looking forward to one day that if I'm faithful, I will see Floyd again. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Floyd was a person that was always ready to step up to the plate. When we had announcements, Patrick would, hey, Tony, we got this announcement, and then, what, what announcement? I, 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 what about where Floyd? Do you know? The, yeah, well, yes, I do. Well, then you do it, because I, 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 I wasn't ready for this. And here comes Floyd, always faithful. We would come to... Uh, our meetings at night. It was already dark, and um, Patrick and I, we uh, got off the truck, and uh, I said, the door's locked. So you have a key? He said, no, I don't have a key. Let's call Carlos. He's going to have to bring the key. He's not here yet. I said, wait a minute. There's somebody There's somebody in there. We saw some moment. It's Floyd. <laughs> Here comes Floyd. He was always here before everybody. And, and he's got the key. I said, Floyd, I've been here 100 years. I don't have a key. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, I got a key. Totally and uh, uh, he was always uh, a, a person that, that was here. He was always encouraging. He was always uh, 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 always up, uplifting. We, we, we had a, a, a good friendship. The years that I got to know him personally, as well, you know, in the ministry, that uh, we we had some time to to talk, you know, uh, personal stuff, and of course, when we get into the Word of God, then we he got real serious, you know. Okay, no more jokes, no more. So uh, uh, it's the memory of a dear friend that that I I keep in heart that uh, we used to drive him home, Patrick and I, and, and uh, one day he says, you guys don't have to drive me home no more. Why, you're not coming to church no more? He said, no, I bought a car. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, brother. But you know what, the, 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 the thing is, is that um, what we can say about Floyd is that he made it. We can say that. We can say that he made it. He never looked back. He never looked back at, at, at the old man. He kept going forward. He fulfilled his walk in a ministry. So it's in the books. Our brother made it. Bless him.
Hello, everyone. My brother Floyd. We got baptized here at the same time. Same time. Yeah. I did not see it. It's okay. Floyd was a prayer warrior. Yes, he was. He was a fine example of a prayer warrior. <laughs> and like Tony said, every Wednesday night, he was here for prayer meetings. And sometimes he would get here before, before he had the key, he would be waiting outside until I got here. Sometimes, you know, people wouldn't show up for the queue. And it would just be he and I, he and I for prayer. So we share a lot and bring our petitions. And um, I respectfully want to continue to pray for his requests. And his requests were a lot mainly for his sons, Friedrich, Jason, and Friedrich Floyd. We talked a lot. We shared a lot about our sons. And I know in turn he prayed for my son. Love my Julia too. <laughs> and Julia would call him Flois <laughs> when she was little. Yeah. Mr. Flois. <laughs> he would always sit in either the second to last pew or the third to last pew on our service. He always had that one dollar to put in her basket when she came up. <clears throat> but what I remember of Floyd is that he was a prayer warrior. Yes, he was. He prayed with faith. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Lord is going to answer those prayers. He may not be here to witness all of his prayer petitions, but when Jesus comes and he awakens, he's going to see that the Lord, because he was so faithful to the Lord, the Lord in turn blesses him. And I just want to continue to pray for, for the family and his sons especially because it, they just, like I said, we shared a lot about our, our, our sons, you know, and, and not to get so, you know, uh, detailed, but just, you know, for salvation, uh, for our, our families, our, our children. And um, I just... I miss him in prayer group, and I know that he was always being prayed for, and he prayed for each and every individual. You gave him a request, and he continued and prayed. So if you asked him to pray for something, you better be sure that he was praying for you, not just here, but he took it to heart in his closet, and he prayed for you. And I was, and I had that reassurance uh, from him, and and I just I'm just blessed to have gotten to know him and to call him my brother in Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay, stay right here. Um, Diana, uh, earlier I invited the men to the men's ministry. I wouldn't invite anybody to our prayer ministry on Wednesday nights, and she's the one that leads out in it. And starting next Wednesday, we have a 10 night, 10 days of prayer, a very spiritual time. We invite any of you, all of you, to come, and she'll be the one leading out, and different ones of us will be presenting. So. <clears throat> Elijah. Yes, sir. Family. I've never met any of you. We missed out. We really missed out. Because now when we meet these such beautiful, lovely people, we should have met you guys earlier when Floyd was alive, was vibrant. Floyd always sat in the second pew when you walk into the church on your right hands when you walk in. And we'd have a Bible study down there and he would look at me and say, Elijah, I'm just so glad I'm here. <laughs> this is the best place I want to be. Praise God. Every Sabbath when he was here, Eva, who is Laura? You're Laura? So you're Eva, who is? 
You are Carol. Who is Eva? Eva is. <laughs> Hold on a minute. You got three sisters. He has got three sisters. Sandy, sorry. And then Junior. Your dad always talked about you. In our Bible study, he would bring the family. He would pray for Junior. He said, Elijah, remember my son. I never got a chance to meet you, and I apologize for that. But today is a celebration. Yes. We are celebrating a man's life who decided to make a decision. Do you know what was his favorite Bible text as three sisters? Do you guys remember? His favorite text, if I was to ask the whole church, all of you here today, Romans 8, but John 3.16. Yes. John 3.16 was a cornerstone which he said, Elijah, if I die, they are going to tattoo John 3.16 on go. my chest. That's what he said. John 3.16, I'm going to ask everybody in this church today. Everybody, the whole world, regardless of what religion you are, knows what John 3.16. Do you agree with me, brother? And they can read it right here. If they don't. And you all of you can read it. So I want to hear rendition of John 3.16 as we celebrate whose life? Floyd. Floyd. Do you know what he told me? He used to correct me. When I say Floyd's name, Genta, he said, no, 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 he said Genta. He, he would teach me this uh, German. He said, when you're going to say Genta, I said, that won't come right. You know, I do have an accent. And when you got that accent, it doesn't come right. He said, don't worry about that. He just gave Ginta. Today, you guys, what did you call him? <laughs> Fred. Oh. Fred. For God so loved the world that whosoever. Hold on a minute. What did Fred say? For God so loved the world that. I, you guys are not saying it. Now, I'm going to stop. I want everybody to say, John, God, God, read it. Read it loud. Everybody said it. For God so loved the world, loved the world. that he gave his only begotten son. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's step back one more time. He said, whosoever, that's what? Laura? Whosoever, that's what? Believes. Right. Whosoever, it doesn't matter. That's you and I. That was Fred's favorite text because he said, Elijah, when I had that word, whosoever, I decided, Elijah, that was a call for me. And I was going to make a decision because I'm not going to perish on the left side. If I'm going to perish, I'm going to perish on the right side with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you guys, ladies, to remember that. Yes. Junior, I want you to remember that. Your father stood, and your brother stood, and you made a decision. Amen. And today, as you're celebrating, I can only ask you, all of you, everybody, make a decision. You are all Christians. Make a decision to accept who? The Lord Jesus Christ, who died for your sin. May God bless you all. Thank you. There's a button there. All right. Okay. Okay. Fred was my neighbor, and uh, he showed a lot of love, and he showed a lot of spirit of God. When we, four brothers and my sister, were young, my father would tell us so much love from God. He would coach us on this, on that. And I remember one time he said, Migo, if you're walking in the H-E-B and you see a loaf of bread on the floor, don't just pass it up. Pick it up and put it in the shelf. Put it back. Just that extra. And one time Floyd and I were outside. And one of the neighbors uh, 
Floyd started picking something up, and I noticed him, and that other neighbor asked him, why, why, are, you, why are you picking this up? And his answer was, because I live here. And so that, he was in peace. He was in full peace. And uh, this is my sister Vivian, and, and she remembers Floyd, and I want her to say that verse. And so God... And, and, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're going to need your tissues now for sure. Okay? We have a video presentation. Sometimes, since it's from YouTube, sometimes you have a little commercial. Let's see if we can do without that. You know, something you got to skip it, but let's see what happens. Uh, they're going to switch over there from the PowerPoint to the YouTube. This is a special presentation after this, which the pastor will share with us the Word of God.
Well, the life of Floyd, because that's how I knew him, has been well eulogized here this afternoon. I'd like to share just a bit of scripture with you today. Three years ago, no, four years ago now, uh, Floyd became a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Laurel Heights in particular, specific. Even though you've said some very, very nice things about Laurel Heights Church, and I'm sure that the ministry of Laurel Heights Church had its impact in such a way that it reached Floyd's heart, but the real bottom line is the Word of God. I know that we come from many different backgrounds here this afternoon, and that's a good thing. The reality is, is not everybody takes the Word of God and just simply shares it, and I'm almost apologetic in what I'm going to say here because I don't want anybody to feel unusual or different or whatever, but I'd like to just give you an opportunity to hear some words from the Word of God that you may not have thought about before. One of my favorite topics in Scripture, believe it or not, is death. Not because I like it, I've struggled with it just like you have. Um, our children are still living, I praise God for that. Uh, I lost my dad. When I was 17, I lost my sister. She was age 54, so was my dad. Um, my mother. Earlier in the 2000s, I think it was like 2002, 2003, my wife can always give all that kind of information. But it's a struggle when we lose. But when we know what God says in His Word... It gives us a special kind of hope that we don't have otherwise. The first scripture I'd like to share with you comes from the book of Genesis. Clear back when God is being described as the creator. In chapter 2, verse 7, God says in His Word, God formed man of the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, a living being. As a result of the elements connected with the life stuff that God infused in it, breathed into the elements, um, Adam and Eve became a reality. They weren't a figment of some, someone's imagination, so to speak. In fact, there are a lot of people today that talk about life as something that, well, maybe we're really living in some sort of an ulterior something or other out there somewhere where we're not really, it's just a figment of our imagination that we are, you know, here this afternoon and able to hug and touch and talk and hear and, and share together. Uh, I, don't, I don't ascribe to that, by the way. I believe that life is real, that, that God made us as, as we are, and I praise God for the gift of life. Amen. There's another scripture that I think is very special. I find it special to me. As a result of, of sin, the life eternal stopped. There was never an intention for mankind to, to have an end to one's life. It was intended that we were created to live forever. But in Genesis chapter 3, the temptation was there to eat fruit that was forbidden. We've all heard the use of the words forbidden fruit in many different ways. In this particular case, it was because that was the only place that Lucifer, by then known as the serpent or Satan, could dwell. As a result of that experience, mankind ate the fruit, disobeyed God, 
we now experience death. But a promise was given in the context of that as well, that the Savior would come, die for our salvation, and by accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, we would have that promise and assurance of eternal life. And I praise God for that as well. Jesus did come. Over the course of years, information had been shared. Uh, back during the time of, 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 of David and Solomon, Solomon ended up writing several of the books of the Bible. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5, I quote, The living know that they shall die. Now, we don't joke about it, but the reality is I know that if I live long enough <laughs> and Jesus doesn't come first, I'm going to be laid in the grave. All right? That is something that is a scientific fact. It happens. The living know that they shall die, but the Bible goes on to say there, but the dead know not anything. I praise God that my father, who drowned at sea back when I was 17, back in 1966, yes, I'm an old man. I don't feel that way until I wake up in the morning and put my feet on the floor, <laughs> and it hurts, and it didn't used to. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I can remember so specifically what happened back then, and I can remember being angry with God. It's not fair. You took my father away. I yelled at him. That's all part of grieving, folks. Don't be afraid of it, because God knows and understands. God knows and understands, because you see, God experienced it as well. When Jesus became our Savior, God became man. John chapter 14, verse 14, John chapter 1, verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. God took the chance that. The third member, the, the second member of the Godhead would become a human being held in the arms just like you held Floyd when he was that little tiny baby and allowed God to grow, to experience pain, hunger, pimples, um, disappointments, ridicule, and became a young man fully dedicated to God and the message that God gave him to share with, with mankind. He gave his life on the cross for me and for you. He died the death that I should die. And I'm not talking about the first death now. I'm talking about eternal death. He died the eternal death that I, may, that I might not have to suffer that eternal death. Yes, if Jesus doesn't come first, <laughs> I will die. But the promise is so beautifully in God's Word that Jesus is going to come. I want to share a couple more Scripture with you. Scripture that I find huge blessing in. The first one I want to take, uh, share with you comes from Revelation chapter 14, and it's verse 13. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. You're going to be surprised if you've not heard these words before, because it almost seems wrong. But listen to it all the way through. Verse 13 says, just a moment here. Get to the right spot here. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead. See what I said? It's going to sound like this is, there's something wrong here. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. 
One thing in particular I remember so distinctly about my brother Floyd is the way he would pray. Just his heart gushing with thanksgiving for what God had done in his life, giving him that second opportunity or the millionth opportunity, whatever it might be for that particular part of his life, because we've all gone through some of those kinds of things, amen? And he was so thankful that God did not throw him away, but gave his life on the cross for him. Also, I want to share with you the joyful side, because, the, you know, the memories, the, the struggle, the, the, uh, the difficulty in, in separation and so forth, those are the tough things. But I'd like to share with you something very unique and special, for, also from God's Word. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 51. Notice these words now, "'Behold, I tell you a mystery.'" Everybody today seems to enjoy mysteries. Uh, Television is loaded with mystery stuff. And they're hoping that you won't guess the answer until the end, of course. But notice what this says. Behold, I tell you a mystery. Get my eyes back on the right spot here again. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet... For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, we may not think of ourselves as being so corruptible, and the other, time, other times we might think of ourselves as being very corrupted, because we know the struggles that we experience in life. But this body that is going to die, notice what happens here at the resurrection. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corrupt, it's almost like uh, uh, Paul was concerned that we didn't get it the first time he said it. And so he repeats it about three times here. Let's, let, me, let me start that part again so you can get the full context here. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul has a parallel passage. He sent in a letter to the church in Thessalonica. I want to share that with you as well because it, it really opens our thinking in a very special way as it relates to the, uh, the, the, the people there living then, and they were concerned about their relationship with God and, and what was going to be happening in their life as well. It starts with verse 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 4 starting with verse 13, but I do not want you to be ignorant. <laughs> now, we don't like people to go around calling people ignoramus because that means that they're imbecilic, and nobody wants to think of themselves as being an imbecile or, or being an ignorant person. But Paul so graphically shares here, um, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, oh, oh just a moment here, I've got to go back up here, there we go. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. He says, I want to tell you the information here, so they'll listen on just a moment longer, lest you sorrow as others that have no hope. This is what brings us hope in life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So the bottom line really comes to the cover page of the bulletin. Take it again with me, please. In the context 
of what we've shared. In the context of the story of the young man who left home and came back and was accepted wholeheartedly by the Father, the Son represents you and I. Those of us who are, have, have wandered astray and God is pleading with us to come to Him. We are the Son. Whether you have a female gender or male gender, the whole idea is, is encapsulated in that prodigal son. The Father is God pleading with us, the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts, saying, come, give your life to me. Come back home. It was in the context of that that Jesus intended these words from John chapter 3, verse 16. We've said it before. Let's do it again as a group. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I have another scripture I want to share with you from the Gospel of John. John chapter 14, starting with verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is speaking here, saying, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. You know I've always told you the truth, Jesus said. If it were not so, I would have told you it's not so, but it is so. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Two choices. One, be the prodigal or be the son that never left home. Sometimes the prodigal is more willing to be forgiven, to come and ask for forgiveness and be forgiven by the father than the one who stayed home and lived a life that everybody thought was the very best. And yet within his or her own heart, they were yelling and screaming, cursing and swearing, living a life within totally unlike what God would want. If your experience today is one where you've been out there angry, out there struggling with things, out there just not feeling like you can come to the point where you can say, Lord God, please take me and forgive me, I would like to encourage you today to take the promises that we've shared from God's Word. Floyd accepted those promises. And in prayer, with tears in his voice and his eyes, Lord God, please forgive me for the man I have been in the past. I thank you for that forgiveness. I thank you for your gift of salvation. God is calling in your life and mine today. We're going to have two prayers as we close today. I'm going to have a prayer. And then we're going to have another closing prayer. The reason why I want to have this prayer is because I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to begin to pray. And there's going to come a point in time in my prayer where I'm going to ask you to join me in that prayer. You can do it out loud. You can do it within your heart. But if you've not accepted Jesus Christ or would like to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ today, Floyd would tell me to do this if he were sitting by my side saying, Pastor Bill... Give them an opportunity. I know he would do that, and so that's what I'm going to do. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, with every eye closed and every heart open to your Spirit speaking to us right now, we just want to thank you for your gift of salvation. You, God, chanced everything heavenly. by Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father, coming to this world as a baby, defenseless, unable to take care of himself, totally dependent upon the very people you came to save. This whole thought is way beyond my understanding or anybody else here today. 
But Lord God, we have your word for it. And we accept that and we thank you for it. If you would like to share in your heart or out loud, I'd like to encourage you to do so at this point in time. If God is speaking to your heart and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, or maybe for the first time, say, I accept Jesus as my Savior, I'd like to encourage you to pray with me right now. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I do not deserve salvation but I know you have promised it to me. The only if is whether or not I accept it. Lord Jesus, I accept your gift today, and I thank you for eternal life. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I do know that your promises are always sure. Thank you for your gift today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, each one.
Please be seated. Floyd's family would like to express their appreciation to each and every one of you for honoring Floyd with your presence today here. We would also like to thank those who have participated in today's memorial service. They would also like to thank the Laurel Heights Church family of, of whom Floyd was a, a brother to us in Christ. They would especially like to thank the men's ministry, the men of valor, and lastly, the deaconesses who have prepared a reception uh, downstairs. The family will remain here for a little bit to give you an opportunity, if you so desire, to come up and, and uh, console the family and greet them and express any thoughts that you may have. Whenever you're ready, if you'd like, you're invited to uh, make your way downstairs to the fellowship room and there is a, a reception down there that you can converse and spend a little time together. You can please stand. Um, I'm going to have two prayers. Um, one is, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Lord, we ask for a blessing over the food that we're about to eat. And Lord, first of all, we want to thank you, Lord, for everyone that attended this memorial service. And we want to thank you, Lord, in so many ways that we talked about Fred, uh, Lloyd, Fred. And we want to thank you, Lord, for allowing him to be a blessing to each one of us, Lord. Some of us, Lord, got to know him for a few years and others for a lifetime. And we want to thank you for his prayers. He was a prayer warrior, Lord. And for all the answered prayers that you answered for him. Through him, he was a man of valor. And we're going to miss it, Lord. Lord, as we also leave here, allow us peace in our grief and the time that it's going to take. But allow the good memories to linger forever, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you allow mercy in his soul. Be merciful in his soul. And may he rest in peace. As we pray this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, Lord, we place it in your hands. Do with him as you wish. We do this in your glorious name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Lord, allow us a moment of silence for our brother and for you, Lord. Thank you very much.